excited about what God has for you today. I know that you have been enjoying Pastor's message. He's been preaching over the last, uh, this whole year he started preaching about the next is now. We've been praying and believing for the next generation. And last week Pastor started a, uh, a sermon series called uh, The Lambs That We Love and the Wolves That Hate Them. And we're going to be talking about that some more. But for now, can you just, uh, I want to um, fast forward to one passage. I just want to read one verse really quick quick, and I'm going to pray one more time, and you can grab a seat. Um, I'm going to uh, read from Isaiah 34, and I want to just read verse 4. For We're going to talk through the whole thing, but I really just want to read uh, verse 4, and then we're going to pray and see what God has for you. I'm so glad you're here. You're going to be glad you're here. God's got something for you today. I'm fired up today. Isaiah 34, 4. Are you with me? Say, I'm with you. If you didn't bring a Bible, say, I didn't bring a Bible. No, I'm just kidding. You don't have to do that. <laughs> We got it on the screen for you. Isaiah 34, 4 says this. You have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. Now that's a good encouraging word for us today. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this great body of believers. I thank you that they care about you, that they care about this next generation. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come in and this word that you've put on my heart now would be sealed into all of our spirits today. God, if there's any Josh on it, if there's any of my own uh, ideas or thoughts, I pray that would get washed out, Lord. I pray that only your word would come forth now. May it come out clear. May it come out exactly how you want it to, Lord. And help us to have hearts that will not just hear your word, but do it. In Jesus' name, say amen with me. Amen, amen. You may be seated. As you guys know, Pastor has been preaching uh, this message. He's been going to bat for the next generation. He's been uh, uh, going uh, against the enemy for this next generation. I'm so glad that we have a shepherd who cares about us. Amen. I'm so glad we got a shepherd that cares about not just the flock, but he cares about the little lambs. Many of you may not know this because you don't have the backstage pass like I do. But long before this series, long before Pastor was talking, Next is Now, he has been, uh, Pastor and Kathy have been champions for our kids and for our families, and we appreciate that. Amen. In fact, there were many things that are happening that I got credit for that I never had nothing to do with. But thank you for the credit. The bus ministry, pastor, they started that way before I even showed up on the scene. They were running. I was helping with the bus ministry when I was a teenager. That was, a, that was Pastor and Kathy's heart for the next generation. It was clear. Many years ago, pastor came to me and said, hey, I, I got a project I, I want you to start working on. And I was like, okay, oh, what's this going to be? He goes, I'm going to get you the money. I'm going to get you whatever you need. But I want to give our kids a great start a great playground for them to be able to play and have fun while they're here at Lighthouse. So I'm, I'm going to, I'll figure out the money part of it. You start designing what you want that playground to look like, and we're going to get that done for these kids. Long, I, that was something that was on Pastor's heart. That wasn't even on my radar. Several years ago, Pastor came to me and said, hey, uh, what's the condition of the buses? I was like, well, uh, many of them are older than me, so that's not a good start. And he said, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the money raised. We're going to find, we're going to buy as many new buses as we can this year. We bought those three new buses in one year because of the heart of Pastor and Kathy, because they fight for this next generation. Amen. As you know, last year, the men in men's ministry, they have been raising money. They raised $16,000 to buy us a new bus, and I'm working on it. Many of you are like, uh, uh, hey, we're, are we getting a new bus? Yes, I'm working on it, but it's not like you can just go to the dealership here in town and buy a bus. It's, it's a little different. But, but Pastor and Kathy have been, for years and years, they've been champion and fighting for our kids. I'm so glad that we have a shepherd, and I'm so glad we have a first lady that cares about the next generation. Let me just remind you one more time that unless the next generation wins, we don't win. So many times as Christians, we get to focus on us, what feels good for me, what tickles my spiritual uh, funny bone, what makes me feel good, what makes brings tears to my eyes, what, what speaks to me, what helped me pastor to grow, help me pastor to grow, what helps me, what helps me. And church, I just want to remind you today that Lighthouse has got to stop being all about Lighthouse. It's got to be about the kingdom work. 
Are you in the room? This is bigger than just a, a building. This is bigger than just a few people that are coming together. This is kingdom work we're talking about. We have a pastor and a first lady that care about the next generation. And I say thank you and God bless them. Amen. So as they've been preaching, this message has so captured my heart. I share briefly, I've been running after services on Sunday with my headphones in, and I've been just listening to Pastor as he's preaching as I run, and he starts talking about the next generation, and I start picking up my pace a little bit, and it's hard to run in a suit and these shoes. And he starts talking about how parents got to step up and be the parents that God has called us to be, and I start sprinting a little bit faster. And then he starts talking about how we're going to uh, uh, fight against Against the wolves that the enemy's trying to bring against our kids, and I'm just barely breathing. My watch just start dinging on me and says, "You're what are you doing? You're about to go have a heart attack today." And I'm looking down. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, and my neighbors behind me. I didn't know they were there, and, and I'm just I just get so pumped when I hear that we have a pastor who cares and who is fighting for these kids. It makes me excited. In fact, I've been here 16 years now. I know, I know your boy's getting old, kids. It's, it's, it's rough on the old man up here, I'll tell you. When I see some of these people up here on the worship team that I had back in the kids' church back in the day, I start getting a little like, ooh, my back starts hurting a little bit more. My knees, I, I start feeling like, oh, man, it's probably going to rain today. My knees are starting to hurt. I feel the pain in my knees. I, I start feeling my age a little bit when I start thinking about these, these kids that are now leading these ministries and God's doing big things and they're, they're all getting married and I get to be in their weddings and or their groomsmen and, and I sit there and just cry my eyes out when I see God. I, I start looking and going, hey, y'all fell in love on my couch. I remember when y'all sat too close to each other that one time. <laughs> Some of them are testifying in this room even right now. They're saying, yes, thank you, Pastor Josh. I appreciate you. Yes, you're welcome. I'd like to see some commission off of that at some point. Remember me in the will. Okay, no, kidding. But I get fired up when we start talking about this next generation. It makes me excited. It gives me hope again. And pastors started talking about how there is an attack against this next generation. There's an attack against these young kids. And it doesn't take a rocket science to know that there is an attack. When I, when I uh, have my little Bryn, who's four years old, and she's uh, watching uh, Elmo and different things, and she's watching different programs and, and different things on, on her iPad, which is fully filtered and fully uh, uh, monitored. And, and then I start noticing that she's, she's listening to some song, and I'm, I'm going, what, what is this song that she's listening to? And, and it talks about how, how uh, we need to welcome all the, uh, uh, all the LGBTQ people to the parade and and we need to welcome all these people and all these transgender people and and all of all of these people are all special and and and, and my four-year-old is listening to this stuff and I'm wondering does no one open their eyes and see this is a all-out attack against our kids don't tell me there's not an agenda don't tell me there's not an attack there is an attack against our kids folks pastor's been warning us. He's been telling us. He's been saying, there is an attack. We have to have our eyes open. One of the big things pastor's been asking me after he knows, because I always send him like a text with like fire emojis or fist pounds or explosions after I watch his message. He's always asking, am I coming across too strong? Is it too hot? Do, I don't want to be, I don't want people to think I'm angry. And, and I keep reminding him, you're not coming across too strong. It's not too big. It, it's, not, it's not angry at people. It's angry at the right things. It's okay to be angry at the right things. Amen. I'm just telling you, church, if you knew the attack that was coming against pastor, the things that we process with families, the things we walk through with families, you would be frustrated and righteously angry about it too. So I appreciate our pastor who's willing to go to bat. I'm going to continue with what he was sharing about, but today I thought I would, uh, uh, as I think it's a saying, flip the script. Is that a thing? If it's not, I'm going to. I'm going to flip the script on this passage that Pastor has been sharing. And he, he, he's been uh, started last week. He's going to finish ne next week. The lambs we love and the wolves that hate them. 
But today I want to preach a message called this. It's called, The Lambs We Love and the Shepherds and Sheep That Hate Them. The lambs we love and the wool and the, I'm sorry, the shepherds and sheep that hate them. Well, Pastor Josh, that's simply a typo. My friend, let me just enlighten you today. Let me challenge your thinking because the reality is that the wolves are not the only thing out for our kids. And I want us to show, I'm going to show you clearly in Scripture how there are more attacks against our kids than what we realize. Stick with me today, and this will make some sense. I'm uh, reading from uh, Ezekiel 34. We read one verse. Now let me fill in the gaps here. It says this. Listen, this is very interesting. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Not prophesy against the wolves or the bears that want to attack. Prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Hmm. Prophesy against the shepherds. The shepherds represented the leaders of that day. The leaders of the church. The leaders of the governor uh, governances. Let me prophesy against the shepherds. It says, tell them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to you shepherds of Israel who only take care of yourselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the you eat the curds, clothe yourself with the wool, and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak, or healed the sick, or take um, or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, then they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered all over the mountains and on every high hill. Heel. I said that funny, sorry. They were scattered over the whole earth and no one searched or looked for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord. Because of my, my flock lacks a shepherd, and so has been plundered, and has become food for all the wild animals. And because my shepherds did not search for my flock, but care for themselves rather than my flock. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against the shepherds. Hmm. I am against the shepherds and will hold them accountable for my flock. I will remove them from tending my flock so that the shepherds can no longer feed themselves. I will rescue my flock from their mouths and no longer be food for them. Friends, I know this is somber and I want you to stick with me today. But when I think about the current state of our culture today, when I think about the generation that we see, it's the generation that Pastor talked about last week where Joshua came and, and then that, there was that whole generation. Do you remember he spoke on this? The whole generation that came up and no one had heard of God or what he had done for Israel. No one told them about how uh, God sent the ten plagues. No one told them about how God uh, had the Passover for them and saved them. No one told the entire generation about how God parted the waters so that they could walk through the rest. See, no one told the God story. And here we're in a generation just like what I read. And this is what I see. I see a generation that is without shepherds. Or, or more detailed, I see a generation of people who was raised with shepherds that stopped caring for their sheep. I see a generation coming that had nobody watching for them. Before the wolf can come in, the shepherd has to get lazy. Before the wolf, before the wild beast, we just read it, before the wild beast can take control of the flock and kill the little lambs, there's got to be a shepherd that goes to sleep on their watch. And friends, I want to remind you with as much grace today that if there are sheep out there, if there are little lambs out there, if there are people out there who aren't serving the Lord, it's because somebody along the way stopped caring for the sheep and only cared about themselves. 
when we sent teams, we prayed over them last week, we sent teams all over Richmond, north, south, east, and west, as far out as we can go. We'll, we, we create whole bus routes just to go get that one kid that lives way out there, and we'll go and get these kids. And I, I, as I see these little babies come in on the buses, and I see these bus drivers and these bus captains that go after them, and I see these, they're, they're good shepherds, they care, they go out and they find their sheep, but I start to we in my spirit because I look at these sweet precious babies coming off this bus and I start thinking somewhere along the line there was a shepherd that dropped the ball three generations ago you would have been in church but now you're not Somewhere, somebody's great-grandfather just stopped going for a couple of weeks in a row. Just stopped paying their tithes for a few weeks in a row. Just stopped caring. Just stopped reading their Bible. And now you precious little one coming off that bus, your precious little one that has to get themselves up and ready on Sundays, you are the result of a shepherd who stopped caring. If we're not careful, friends, we find ourselves as those shepherds. I'm preaching to myself today. Perhaps we need to take a look at what we're doing and give ourselves a punch in the arm today that says, I need to care more. It all starts with that, doesn't it? If you understand the why something needs to happen, the how is not important. But the why. Why? Why? The enemy goes after the sheep that are alone. In fact, if you're here, I know, I know there's some here on all kinds of different levels, and maybe you've only been coming here a few weeks, or you're walking through a difficult time. If you find yourself in that situation, and you know you're vulnerable, I'm not serving the Lord like I need to be. I'm working on it, but I'm not where I need to be. Let me just give you a real practical piece of advice, okay? Get as close to the shepherd as you can get. Just but tiptoe your way. To, excuse me, sorry, pardon me. I'm going to excuse me, the shepherd's over there. Huh? Yeah, hi, hey, I'm welcome to the house. Yeah. Do the little uh, line dance shuffle to the front of the line, and you just squeeze up as close to the shepherd as you can. You just say, I'm going to just say right here with you. And you just get as close to that shepherd as you can. Because when you start letting yourself get isolated, friend, you become an easy prey for the enemy. And we have kids. We have this next generation. They don't know how isolated they are. They think that they're well connected because they got a bajillion followers, but they are not connected. They don't have one true friend in their life. They're just looking. They just look for somebody who's going to take them and shepherd them. And you say, well, I don't just connect. Well, I don't. this next generation, I just don't understand. They don't need somebody cool. They got me. And I'm not cool, and I'm cool with that. They don't need somebody cool. They need somebody who cares. Amen. In this passage I, I read, it talks about the difference between a bad shepherd and a good shepherd. Let's look at what the Bible says. John 10, 11 says that Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. That's what this next generation needs. They need somebody who's going to lay down their lives for the sheep. Amen? I know you've been sitting a long time. Stand up. Let's give God a praise break right now. Come on, like you mean the lighthouse. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Don't you be sleeping on me. Hallelujah. Let me remind you today, and we're going to talk through this, and then we're going to pray. Don't snooze on me now. The wolves in our culture, they're looking for easy prey. They're looking for the sheep that are on the outs. They're looking for the sheep that are alone. And do you know what? A shepherd who stops caring is just as dangerous as a wolf. Write that down. A shepherd who stops caring is just as dangerous as a wolf. Somebody along the line stopped caring, and now the wolves come in. So what did the shepherds start doing? 
What did they stop doing? I want to talk through this, and then we're going to talk about the sheep as well. If you're glad you're here so far, say amen. I just want to remind you, time out real quick. Let's have a little time out chit-chat talk with Pastor Josh. The best thing that you can do for your kids in this next generation is be 100% sold out on fire for Jesus. I wish there was a better amen than that. That should have got somebody going. Amen. We've got to stay on fire for Jesus. Because when we get to this altar and we, we go after God, and when you're reading your word in the morning, when your babies are still sleeping and you're praying over them, Dad, you're praying over them, Mom. You got those pictures of your grandbabies, Grandma and Grandpa, and you pray for them every day. What is that doing? That is keeping that fire in your spirit hot. When that fire stays hot, it keeps things in perspective. You continue to care because God is continually moving something in your spirit. So then it creates a caring for my kids. I continue to care for my grandkids. I continue to care for that neighbor kid. I continue to care for that Sunday school class. I continue to care for those bus riders. And as you continue to care, then you become a shepherd who's willing to do things for the sheep. I see it all the time because I get, I get the awesome privilege of showing up and asking you to come and be a part of something all the time. In fact, I know there's some of you in this room that's been avoiding me for months because you know I'm going to ask you to help. And it's pretty easy to tell because there are some people, and when I approach them, there is a level of care and concern for the next generation because God has been, God has been moving that into their spirits. And they say, yeah, I, can, I definitely want to help. I can help more than once if you need to. And there, there are people who are serving all the time, and, and they never get burned out. Why? Because they are keeping that fire going themselves. And then there's people, and I need you, so don't back out on me. But then there's people that go, yeah, I can, I can help out. And you're great people. And you show up, and you're faithful. And I appreciate you, and I need you. But the next level for you would be you start getting alone with God. And you start praying. And then you let the fire start on the inside. And then this thing that Pastor Josh asked you to do to come watch these kids or come teach this lesson or come drive this bus, all of a sudden you show up on Sunday morning five minutes earlier because you're starting to understand, wait a minute, there's a next generation that needs what I'm doing. You start seeing how what you do affects somebody else's life. You start seeing how I need to care because this is a God thing happening here. And God begins to, to turn, churn something inside of you. And you begin to really uh, get on fire about this thing because what happened? You started to become a shepherd that fell in love with the sheep. We got to be in love with the sheep. We got to care. These shepherds, these leaders that Ezekiel called out, there were some things that they were not doing. I want to talk about them. Number one, it says in verse four, it says this, the weak you have not strengthened. Number one, the weak you have not strengthened. Write that down. The weak you have not strengthened. I don't know about you, but anybody in the room that when your kids get sick, you go into, like, panic attack mode. Be honest. Where are you at? Oh, come on. I'm not the only one. This week, we've had the privilege of passing around a stomach bug in my home. Praise the Lord. And I have to confess I was the first. This was, like, early in the week. So some of you, I know how you are. Oh, Pastor Josh should not be here. No, this was, like, last Sunday. So I'm good. I promise. I just need to go to the bathroom real quick. Hold on. Joking. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was funnier than what y'all. So it, it went from me, then it went to Bryn. So Wednesday she woke up at 2 in the morning and decided that was the perfect time to get sick for five hours. Praise the Lord. And then it went to Micah. And, and uh, something happens in my heart 
when my kids get sick? How many know how, how I feel? How many experience that where you are just heartbroken to see your little ones sick and you just, you just do everything you can for them and you're just right there and, and, you know, and you're just trying to help them. You just want to see them be whole. You just want to see them be okay. And, and it's easy to think about it when we see our kids that are physically sick. We want to see them made whole. We want to see them restored. But let me remind you that there is a spiritual sickness and disease that comes after and wants to attack your kids. And friends, we have got to be more concerned about the spiritual state of our children and our grandkids than we are about their physical bodies. Amen. Back in those days, the shepherds would, would stand right at the gate, and it would be a narrow gate, and all the sheep would get herded into the pasture, and that shepherd would stop each sheep one at a time and examine them over. Who, who's not, which one's breathing weird? Oh, this one over here, we need to give some special attention to this one. This one shows signs of sickness. It's not breathing well. It's not breathing like the other ones. Okay, bring them in. Yeah, that one's good. That one looks healthy. Yeah. Yes, this one's good. Okay, hold on. No, no, this one. This one is not well. Something is happening. This one seems to be sick. We got to get this one mended. Friends, I just hope that you're capturing this today, that we have got to be so in tune with our kids and what is happening with them, that we recognize when something is just a little bit off. It's just something, there's something there. This is why having family meal time is important. Because at family meal time, you go, wait a minute, that answer, that there's a there's a attitude there. Or, or, or you say, no, no, they're not saying the whole story about what happened at school today. And you are taking a moment every day before bed when you pray with your kids. You better be praying with your kids. Or when you read your Bible, you better be reading your Bible. And you're taking these moments throughout every day and you're saying, okay, how's, how, how's their breathing? How they're looking? What's going on? What needs fixed? What needs strengthened? Are they growing at a proper rate? Are they, are they ninth graders and they don't know how the Bible was written yet? That's a problem. Are they in the 12th grade and they don't know that God's word is inspired? That's a problem. They're not growing at the rate that they should spiritually. Something is not right. How do you know if something is right or not right when all you do is look at your phone? Pastor talked about last week about how uh, 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 evil and vile that little device that we equip our kids with. You would not dare let your teenager just roam the world by themselves. You would not dare let your seven-year-old just roam the world by themselves. But yet you give them internet access and you say, there's the big wide world, kid. Go after it. Have fun. And then you just let them go. Well, you would never do that, but we do it all the time. I would raise the level to say, parents, you get off the phone too. When you're stuck looking at a screen, you can't tell the spiritual health of your children. Somebody's got to be a shepherd that cares enough to go, something is not right here. This kid used to move at this pace. Now they're moving at this pace. Something has changed. Well, we're just taking the church. Pastor Josh is on. He'll just, he'll just uh, watch him. He'll let us know if there's anything going on. Oh, don't, oh, don't get me started, Lord. I need you, Father. A good shepherd knows when their sheep are feeling sick. That's why the Lord's Prayer says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. It's not he gives me the option he knows I need to lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down. No, sweetheart, you're not going to that practice today. I'm making you lie down in green pastures. But Pastor Josh, it's snowy outside. It's cold. That's not what I mean. We have to know where we're at with our kids. We have to find the weak, and we have to see them strength. It's the same as number two, the sick you have not healed. The sick you have not healed. A good shepherd cares for the sheep even when they're sick. 
Can I get a better amen than that? Because that was zero. A good shepherd cares for their sheep even when they're sick. Well, Pastor Josh, of course he cares for their sheep. No, some of us aren't caring for the sick ones. Some of us aren't caring for the sick ones. When I see this culture that these kids are having to be raised in, when I see the agendas being brought against them, when I see kids that are making bad choices at young ages, I don't attack the sheep that are sick. Are you tracking with me? I don't attack the sheep that are sick. I help heal the sheep that are sick. I don't attack the ones that are confused. I don't, at I don't attack the ones that are confused. I don't attack the ones that are victims. They are victims. These little kids, these young people that are making bad choices on the Internet, I mean, I've got, I can't get into details, but there are just so many reports we're hearing about young kids getting into serious trouble on the internet. I mean serious. Young people who are making serious de decisions at young ages. I mean serious decisions that are bad decisions. I don't get mad at the little lambs when they're sick. I just look at them and go somewhere there is a shepherd who stopped caring for them. I will then come along and I will help the sick ones. Oh, I, I know I'm fired up because I'm a next-gen pastor around here, but I hope you're getting fired up too because there are kids in your family right now. There are kids in your neighborhood right now. There are kids in your extended family right now who are sick. I mean spiritually sick. And somebody at some point is going to have to go and say, I don't care what you say about yourself right now. I don't care how far bad or how far gone you think you are. There is a shepherd here. There is somebody here who cares enough for you. I will help get you better. I will help get you better. They're sick. They're just sick. Number three, the injured you have not bound up. The injured you have not bound up. When I, what I love about the story of the Good Samaritan is that the Good Samaritan, when he found that kid that was beat up and left for dead, he didn't just say, well, I'm praying for you. God bless you. Hope things turn around. All things, I had to bring a funny voice out at some point, right? Oh, oh, I'll bring the classic. You want the classic voice? I know you do. It's fine. Hello. Uh, oh, don't worry. I'll help you. I'll be, I'll be praying for you, friend. No, he doesn't say that. Was that the classic voice I always do? Yeah, I think so. Okay, it's like uh, kind of like Kermit the Frog or something. He he didn't just say, "Well, I'm praying for you." I got. No, I can't do it without saying it. Sorry. <laughs> he <laughs> how did. How's my normal voice sound? I forgot what I normally sound like. Hello. Hi. He didn't just say, I'm praying for you. Hope everything works out while you're sick. No, no. He got that, he got that, that person that was beat up, and he took them as far as he could take them to make sure that they were healed and restored. Are you tracking with me? He not only took him to the hotel, he paid for the hotel. He said, I'm going to come back and check in and make sure it's enough. He did all that he could to make sure that that man was restored. And there are people who are walking around. There are God's precious lost sons and daughters. That's what they are. They're God's lost sons and daughters who are walking around cut and injured. They've been cut. They've been injured. They're looking for somebody to help bind up the wounds. I share this a lot when people say things like, well, I don't, especially uh, young people, 
or, or people that have walked through some things, and they say things like, well, I, I don't believe in God. I, I'm just not a fan of the church. I just, I just you, know, you know what I hear them saying? I hear them saying, I have been hurt before. I have been hurt before. In fact, there are people in this room who your lighthouse experience, if we can be honest, your lighthouse experience hasn't always been wonderful. But you are here, and you have endured, and you have pushed through. And I want to commend you for that. I, I see that in you. I appreciate that. Lighthouse has not passed. There have been people that we have done wrong by. There have been people that I've done wrong by. The, I know, it's hard to believe. As good looking and perfect as I am, I know, even me. Listen, friends, there are people who you've hurt. Let's be honest. There have been people walking around with a limp because of what you have done for them. There are people walking around with a limp because of what the church, Capital Church, has done for them, has done to them. When we have people come in the lighthouse and they're walking in with a limp and they're walking in like this and they're standoffish, and they don't want to get in. They don't. They they seem like they they they're not really all about it yet. Listen, don't you judge them. I wish I had a better amen than that. You don't know the past that they've walked through. You don't know the cut that maybe the Capitol Church has done to them. You don't know their backstory. And while I'm saying that, let me remind you again, when you see somebody who seems a little bit too carried away during worship, they're jumping around and you think that's strange. They're lifting their hands and you think that's weird. Let me remind you of something too. You don't know their backstory. You don't know what God has done for them. There are people redeemed and set free that were addicted to drugs and alcohol. Now they're free. And so they ought to dance a little bit. It's okay. We've got to realize that there are people, we are in a culture right now, and they are walking around injured. They are walking around hurt. They need somebody that will come and help bind up their wounds and say, I'm sorry, you've been hurt in the past, but let me put my arm around you. We're going to walk through this thing together. You are not alone anymore. Amen. Number four, the strayed you have not brought back. These shepherds that stopped caring for their sheep, they wouldn't go after the strays. Now, the strays are not the ones that are way out there in the forest. They're just the ones that are a little bit too far away. They're just, they're, they're just not, in the, they're not in the group, but you can still see them over there. They're just straying. They're just, they're just over that way somewhere. Friends, let me remind you today. That's why there's empty pews around you. That's why there's some people that aren't here today because they're strays. They haven't left all together, but they're experiencing, they're trying something else. Some of you have kids and grandkids, young teenagers, who they're not gone yet. But, friend, let's be honest about their condition. They are definitely straying. They are straying. They're, they're attempting, they're trying new things. They're exploring the things of the world just a little bit. They haven't completely gone away yet. They haven't completely left the eyesight of the shepherd yet. But they're, they're there, and the shepherd sees them and says, Ah, yeah, I can still see them there. Okay. Yeah, they'll, they'll come back if they want to eventually. They, oh, what does it matter? It's all right. They're, they're out there. They'll be back. I'm going to be back. Friends, somebody... Listen, there are too many strays in this community. There are too many strays in Wayne County for Pastor Josh to go after them all. Somebody's going to have to say, you know what, I'm going to be the shepherd to go after the stray again. Somebody's going to have to say, I'm going to be the shepherd that's going to care about the kid who's, who's trying to, to fill a God-shaped hole with something other than God. I'm going to be the one that's going to have to go after them. I will be the one to stand in the gap. I will be the one that says, no, 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 come over here, baby. Uh-uh, you're not going that far. Nuh-uh, you're, you come on, come, come spend time with the shepherd. Come on, I hope somebody's catching this this morning. Morning. Before the wolf comes in, a sheep has to start straying. Pastor spoke last week about the difference between the rod and the staff and about how important it is to know which one to use. 
So many of you awesome people of God in this room, you, pull, you grab the rod when you should grab the staff. Or maybe you grab the staff when you should be grabbing the rod. And that sheep starts wandering away just a little too far. That sheep starts straying away, and, and all of a sudden, you're starting noticing that they're doing things they shouldn't be doing, but they're still around a little bit, or, or they're stepping out and doing things that, that you told them not to, but they're still just around a little bit. And my prayer for you is that you would know when it is time to grab the rod and say, no, you are not doing that, and when it's time to say, no, baby. You're not going to do that. No. You're, no. Come on. I'm right here. Let's go. Let's go out to the movies this weekend. Let's go eat. Where you want to eat at, honey? Where you want to eat at, bud? Come on. Let's have some daddy time. Let's figure out why you're straying. Come on, little guy. Let's figure out why you're straying. Then there's times to go, you will not stray. But Lord, help us to know when is when. But the bottom line, somebody's going to have to notice. Someone's going to have to pursue them. Speaking of pursuing, the stray ones aren't the only ones that are not in the picture. Number five, the lost you have not sought. The bus teams are leaving. Thank you, bus teams. We love you. We appreciate you. The lost, speaking of the lost, the lost, not that they're lost, that they're going after the lost. Never mind. Okay. The lost you have not sought. This is the other reason why there's empty pews. Because the lost you have not sought. Somebody. Will you stand on your feet with me, please? Worship team, come forward, but nobody else moving. We're not quite done yet. I got a whole nother... Uh, one, two, three, four, seven pages left, so we got about three hours left. The lost you have not sought. The good shepherd knows when there are sheep missing. Let me say that again. The good shepherd knows when the sheep are missing. Amen? Amen. Now listen, Lighthouse, when Pastor shows up next week, y'all better be saying amen a lot because he gets on to me when y'all start slouching. Hey, hello? We're going to finish this day just by practicing our amen. Say amen. 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 Simone, come, buddy. Listen to me. Somebody's got to go after the lost somebody's going to have to go after the lost. When's the last time your heart broke about the sons and daughters of the Lord that are far from him? Whew. When's the last time you started getting concerned about the sons and daughters that are away from the Lord? It's time we get hungry for the lost sheep again. It's time. It's got to be bigger than just Lighthouse. It's got to be bigger than just what, what we're doing in this community here. It's got to be about the lost sheep. The shepherd counts 97, 98, 99. Wait a minute. Hey, boys. Hey, hey, shepherds, round up. We got to miss a sheep. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And they start going. And they go, you go that way. You go that way. You go that way. And they start looking anywhere and everywhere for the lost sheep. Somebody's got to go after the lost sheep. Amen? As the worship team gets ready, go ahead and sit back down one more time. I thought I was done. I'm not done. Pastor, he'd, he'd be on point number two by now. I'm just kidding. Because, see, Ezekiel, as he's sharing this prophecy that the Lord gave him, he's prophesying against the shepherds. But if you remember, I called this message, the lambs we love and the shepherds and the sheep that hate them. Because Ezekiel doesn't stop there. He starts prophesying against the sheep as well. 
Let's read what he's got to say about the sheep. He says this. This is Ezekiel 34, 17. Put it up on the screen here. It says, as for you, my flock. Now we're talking sheep. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I will judge between one sheep and another and between rams and goats. It is not enough. Listen to this. For you to feed. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture? Must you also trample the rest of the pasture with your feet? Is it not enough for you to drink clear water? Must you also muddy the rest with your feet? Must my flock feed on what you have trampled and drink what you have muddied with your feet? When the healthy, good sheep go out into the pasture of good, rich food, and they eat it all and leave nothing for the struggling ones. When they trample over all the pasture and only eat, and not just only eat what they want, but to eat all of it. Are you seeing this? When, when the healthy, strong sheep not just drink the water, but then they jump in the water and they get their dirty feet all over the water and mess up the water for those coming after them. For those of you who call Lighthouse your home, I got a challenge for you today. You got to make room. You got to make room. You got to make room for the injured and the hurting and the sick. Well, what does that mean, Pastor Josh? There's, there's room for them here. No, no. I mean make room here. I mean make room here. I mean, there's not one person who comes into this place on their first time where they're not bombarded with people saying, man, I'm glad you're here. What's your, what's your phone number? Let's get together. Not going after a girlfriend or a boyfriend, but concerned for people who are hurt and injured. When somebody doesn't come and they miss a service or they miss a Wednesday night, and it's not the pastor that's calling them to say, hey, is everything okay? It's you calling them because you care about them. It means you don't just show up on Sundays and make this a part of your routine, but you get involved in the game. You play your part. You do your role. You're faithful in your tithes and offerings and giving. You're saying, I'm a healthy one. I am a strong one. But listen, I, I don't just feed myself, but I'm concerned about your nutritional value as well. Here, this pasture is for you. Come on. Yeah, you can sit in my seat. It's not a problem. I've been sitting there 15 years. I'm so glad you stole it from me. I'll sit next to you. Let's sit together. It cannot just be about the healthy sheep eating all the time. I remember a song way back when I was a kid. It was back on cassette tape where music was good. You endured the bad songs to find the one good one. You didn't skip. The only way you skipped is if you got the pencil thing out just right. I remember an old song about the church. This is going to sound harsh, so be, bear with me. I was not planning on preaching this today or saying this today. The old, I'm sure you've heard a pastor probably saying it many times. It's the old song that says to the church, you're just a fat little baby. <laughs> you want your bottle and you don't mean maybe. You're just a fat little baby. Could it never be said of Lighthouse? Could it never be said of Lighthouse that all we are are a bunch of shepherds who don't care or overfat in the sheep that don't make room for others. That ought to light somebody up in this place. 
if you care for Lighthouse, if you care for what God is doing, for the kingdom work that God is doing, then we've got to make room at the table. And this is something Lighthouse does well. I'm not saying no one's not doing their part. I'm just saying in order for us to go where God is calling us to go, we've got to get the emphasis off of what we're putting in our bellies and start going, wait a minute, there used to be another person here. They're not here anymore. I better figure out where they're at. I better call them. Don't make it just a pastor thing. Don't make it just a pastor Josh thing. Somebody's got to become a shepherd today. Now will you stand to my to your feet? Aren't you glad I got that last part out? I knew you would. We're going to pray over several things today. I'm going to invite everybody to the altar in just a moment. Here's what I envision happening. Here's what I feel like God wants to do. Maybe you're here today and you know that you're just a shepherd that's not caring like you should. You got some lost loved ones that you need to amp up for. We're going to invite you to come in just a moment. Maybe you're here and you know, you, you should do a better job of connecting with somebody, reaching out to somebody, loving on somebody, making room for somebody, caring about the next generation. We're going to make room for you. We want you to come to this altar. But as we were talking about the shepherds and the shepherd's job and what the good shepherd does, is the good shepherd does these five things for the sheep. The good shepherd does these five things. The good shepherd um, strengthens those that need strength. He heals those that need healed. He binds up the wounds of the hurting. He, he goes after the, the lost. He goes after those that are strained. And as I was praying through this message, as I was trying to figure out what God would have us do, I just felt like the Lord said there are going to be people here today in all five of those categories. There's going to be those that are sick here today. There's going to be those who just need strength. There's going to be those who are injured that need their wounds bound up. There's going to be somebody coming to this altar in just a moment who is still carrying a past hurt from an old church somewhere. You're still carrying that wound, and you're picking at that scar all the time. You just pick at that scar, and it can't heal because you keep picking at it. God wants to heal you today. He wants to bind up that wound so you can't pick at it anymore. There's going to be some, and you would say, you know what? Real honest, Pastor Josh, I'm strained. I haven't left yet. I'm still a part of the, the flock, but I'm strained. I'm dabbling in things I should not be dabbling in. I'm strained. And I know there are some here, and you're just lost. If you're honest enough, you're away from the, you're away from the good shepherd. You're away from the Lord. In fact, with our heads down and eyes closed, no one's looking around. This is just between you and God. This is just a moment of honesty. Please don't leave here the same way. This message is for you. This service is for you today. But maybe you're here and you need strength from the Lord. Where are you at? I just need some strength. I need some strength. I need some strength. Maybe you're here today and you're sick in your body or in your emotions or in your mind. And you need a healing from the Good Shepherd today. Where are you at today? I'm sick. I'm fighting some sickness. Where are you at? Come on. I'm fighting some sickness. I'm fighting some sickness. Maybe you're here today and you're injured. Maybe you've been cut deep by somebody. Maybe you've been hurt by somebody. Maybe it was the church. Maybe it wasn't. But you're just injured. You need somebody. You need the good shepherd to come and bind up your wounds. Where are you at today? Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you're here today and you're strained. You're still a part of the church. You're still a part of the flock. But... Maybe you're dabbling in something you shouldn't be messing with, and you know it. I got to get closer to the shepherd. I'm going to make my way to the good shepherd. Where are you at? Let me see. Come on. Where are you at? Come on. And maybe number five, maybe you could be real honest with me and tell me there's maybe I'm lost. I'm not anywhere where I need to be at with the Lord. I'm just, I'm lost. I've got to get my life right with Jesus. Where are you at? Let me see. Where you at? Come on, come on, come on. We've all been there. We've all raised our hands. We just want to know who to pray for. How many would be here and say, I've got to do better making room in my heart for others? Where are you at? Come on, where are you at? Yeah, yeah. And maybe there's some shepherds in the room that would be honest enough to say, I've got to care more. 
I've got to go after more. I've got to raise my level of awareness. Where are you at? Come on, let me see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 